comprises the film industry and most people think of that they think of Hollywood and they think of big film studios dudes in suits running around yelling at people you know millions of dollars flying around but most of those people got their start at the same place we are now which is the independent film industry which is full of you know young people who weren't the jock in high school who didn't get the cheerleader if that's what they wanted um, you know and have had to deal with some things and love film enough that they want to make that the thing they do nine to five. So I think the film industry as a whole is very cognizant of the fact that everyone has a different way of processing an event, everyone has a different way of processing a feeling, and what we do with film, particularly in theaters, is bring 250 of those people together in a dark room at the same time to take that ride. So I feel like the film industry is constantly thinking about how do we get those people into that room to take that ride without being exploitative, without being, you know, insensitive to the fact that every one of those people has had a whole day before they came to the show. Every one of these people have had trouble at work, they've had trouble at home, they've had a fight with their girl or their, or their guy, or they've had a, you know, a, a parent that's sick or, or someone that, you know, is going through a tough time. And part of what, you know, we take joy in providing is, you know, two and a half hours where we can help you escape from that 
together with a group of other people. So if you're if you're you know the most social person in the world, or if you're a very lonely person, we're going to bring you on a ride with a lot of people. We're going to bring some people together to experience something emotionally at the same time, and that's a great feeling at the end of the day when you get a good film that does that right. And nothing better. Um, I think in the past few years, it's become something that's more prominent. You know, mental health is something that people more openly discuss than they had in previous years. So I think the portrayal of it in media has really become more understanding and in a, way, in a way it's tried to put a spotlight on the issue because depression is pretty prominent when you think about it now. Um, you know, people are talking about it more openly. So the depiction of it in the media and in the film industry has really become one more understanding. Um, you know, it's something that's tackled in more films recently. Um, but I think it's a subject matter that the film industry is really starting to embrace more and really is doing more about. I mean, absolutely, and I think it's, you know, part of what art does, and whether that be movies, whether that be albums, whether that be books, whether that be, you know, painting, is, is you know, as human beings, I feel like people are always trying to figure out how to express themselves. and. Part of what we do here is figure out, okay, we've got this piece of art, like it's something that has, has expressed itself and it might have something to do with, you know, maybe the filmmaker experienced the loss, maybe maybe a producer was drawn to a story because, you know, something happened like, you know, I found a film earlier this year, I lost my father last year, and, you know, that film spoke to me in a way that maybe it hadn't before. So then it makes you think, it's like, okay, this film, if it can help me, how can we help this film help other people? So, you know, I would say absolutely films have, have, have helped me deal with anything from loss of a friend, loss of a loved one, um, a breakup, you know. You know, if you look at films carefully, you know, you're going to have your blockbusters and they're going to have explosions and that's a fun time at the movies. But a lot of films, particularly independent films, deal with like, you know, an emotion and what we find in the industry is usually that emotion is something that the director or the writer experienced firsthand that makes them want to tell the story and help other people you know, process this in the way they have. So I can think of so many films. I would say that you know, most of my favorite films have you know, hit me on that personal level. And either, even if it hasn't helped me per se, it's like it's helped give me another perspective on how the rest of the world deals with something that I may not want to go into the office and start talking about. Yeah, you're a tough time, and if so, which movie? Um, huh, it's a tough question. Um, I'm not sure, um, to be honest, if, you know, I definitely listen to music and that's helped me get through tough times. I don't know if I've ever seen a film and just emerged reinvigorated. Um, I think there's one that, from a few years ago, called Why Don't You Play in Hell, that, you know, I emerged from in a considerably better mood than I was previously, because that film was just so much fun. But. I don't know if, to be honest, um, one helped me gain a better understanding or a state of acceptance that would help me get through a tough time particularly. Well, I mean, I feel like there's a number of levels. I mean, you know, at the filmmaking level, it's about telling a story that rings true. And I mean, there are movies that deal with things like depression that do it badly. And it comes off as false, it comes off as phony, it comes off as something that, you know, I don't want to spend two hours doing this, I'd rather go see Star Wars again. But then you have films that deal with tough topics incredibly well. They do it very with sensitivity, they do it with heart, they do it with emotion, they do it with soul. And that's something that even though like it's Friday night, you worked all week, you want to go out with your girl, you want to go see something, you want to just escape for two hours. But maybe you don't necessarily need to go see Star Wars. You don't need pure escapism. You want to have an emotional response. And that's where films, I find, can, can really bring a group of people together in a way that very, other, very few pieces of art can. Books can do it. Albums can do it. Paintings can do it. But never do you really find 250 people sitting in a room together reading a book at the same time. Like, experiencing the emotional beats. Like, when a character says, your dad died, you don't when you're reading a book alongside 250 other people, which I feel heightens the emotion and helps people process things that otherwise might be, you know, hard for them to process. So, 
very much I, I think the film industry um, you know deals with that by you know making sure that we provide alternatives to the escapist like you know big blockbuster fare which we all love but we don't it's like eating junk food all the time you might love Big Macs but you can't eat Big Mac every day for breakfast sometimes you want to have a full course meal something a little more substantial and the industry can do its part by, you know, making sure that they provide that full course meal to everybody. Well, I think the best films are ones that are honest. And I think if a filmmaker was to make a film about depression, you know, just having it be honest, having a realistic depiction of the disease is really how one can make a difference. Um, you know, have a character that may be sympathetic overall, though maybe not entirely at times based on the nature of the illness. You know, just have someone relatable and realistic that the audience will want to root for, that they'll want you know, to conquer the illness as much as one can. You know, just be honest, have an experience that audiences connect with, and you know, don't necessarily sugarcoat the darkness that comes with depression, but really, you know, put forth a film that people understand and you know, it may offer some insights to it. You know, depict the the pink depression really in a way that you know is real. Mm -hmm.